Welcome to the channel. Today we will be talking about pulling a sword from a hole. Yeah, not that kind of hole. As the world nears its destruction, only a man worthy enough to pull the sword out of the hole can save the world from darkness. Will someone finally put the stone out of its misery? Let's find out. It all starts with the princess exploring the ruins of a cave as she tries to confirm the existence of the shepherds as she longs to meet them. Guess she's never heard the phrase, never meet your hero. Afterward, the princess heads back to the kingdom for the Holy Sword Festival where the citizens get to attempt the trial of the sword. Yeah, holes never get old. While trying to coordinate the masses, Clem is summoned by the princess, Alicia, and she quickly rushes to see her. She is informed about the strange mist spotted in Greel, but it seems unaffected by the weather or the rain, and this makes the princess worried as she believes it might harm the people. I wonder what humans did this time to make nature mad. Clem happily accepts the mission and informs Alicia that the record of the seraphic remains she gave her is her most treasured possession. Shortly after, Alicia holds a meeting with the elders and Lord Matthias, who wants to enlist the people of Highlander Rolling for the festival into the army forcefully, all because they wanted to pull a sword. However, Alicia refuses their proposal, and this makes the council very angry. Later on, Alicia discovers that the mist is getting more sinister and fears for Clam's life, as there has been no word from her in two weeks. Bet she fought with the mist and got blown away. <laughs> okay, no more weather jokes. She sets out to find Clem with her most trusted soldiers, Gannett and Tao, but they are ambushed on their way to Griel. Tao and Gannett engage the bandits in battle, holding them off, but Alicia is forced to defend herself after she is attacked by the bandits. She defeats her assailant with ease and unmasks him. However, he hesitates to kill him and tries to interrogate him, but he uses the opportunity to escape after transforming into a monster before her very eyes. Did not see that coming. After the battle, Alicia recalls her conversation with her master, Lady Maltron, before setting out to find Clem. It turns out Alicia decided to hold the festival festival, as she believes someone would be able to pull the sword out of the stone and become the shepherd, according to the legend. Later that night, Tao and her attendants try to cheer Alicia up, stating that Clem is probably exploring the ancient ruins in Griel. But this doesn't work, as Alicia fears for her attendant's life as the mysterious mist continues to thicken. Don't know why that word always makes me smile. The next day, Alicia arrives at a vineyard with her subjects, where they encounter a farmer and his daughter. She questions him about the mist and discovers that the mist has been around for a long time. Well, obviously, you just didn't realize. Later that day, Alicia arrives at Greeland, heads over to the guard station to search for Clem. Alicia discovers that the guard in charge is sick and informs her that Clem is headed north toward the mist. Alicia then asks Tao to stay in town and investigate the effects of the mist on the people of Griel while she goes goes after Clem. This is not going to end well. Later on, Alicia finds Clem, who is researching the ruins of Griel, alongside Professor Drake. However, the mist attacks them with a tornado, forcing the princess to retreat with her attendants, and they leave Drake in the cave. Guess the man always gets taken first. He discovers that the people used to live side by side and worship invisible forces in the past. However, mankind forgot all about the gods, and this disrupted the balance of the world. He tries to study the balance in order to uncover the secret, but he is blown away by the storm. Hmm, I thought knowledge was power. Meanwhile, Alicia's attendants, Volta and Gannett, also get pulled into the storm, which makes her sad. Clem tries to get off the horse as her weight is slowing them down, but Alicia refuses and tries to save them both. While they try to escape, a mysterious woman appears and tries to kill them with her destructive power. But Alicia manages to evade all her attacks like they didn't already have enough problems. All of a sudden, her previous assailant appears in this monstrous form and attacks the mysterious lady, creating a landslide in the process, but she overpowers him with ease. During the chaos, Clem gets swallowed, leaving Alicia all alone, and she becomes devastated. She returns to Greel and quickly
quickly discovers that the town has been destroyed by the tornado along with everyone she met. Soon after, the farmer's daughter approaches, but she is quickly swallowed by the tornado, sending Alicia into despair. Sounds like the tornado likes to swallow. Devastated, Alicia quickly realizes that she is all alone as everyone has been sucked into the tornado. Alicia wanders in the forest looking for survivors, but she doesn't find anyone and decides to camp in an ancient ruin for the night as a strange creature watches her, in a non-creepy sort of way, of course. The next day, she discovers a mural about a shepherd arriving on Earth with the Seraphs by his side, and he will bring salvation to the world with the might of the Seraph. But she doesn't believe the painting. Yeah, I wouldn't either. But she contemplates the fate of the world. Alicia doesn't notice that she is about to be attacked by a swarm of insects. The strange creatures try to warn her, but it turns out the animal is invisible to human eyes. Turn around, princess! Defenseless, Alicia is backed into a corner, but the creature saves her with his magic and she tries to escape. Alicia manages to get out alive but she falls into a river which teleports her to a new world. Sounds like trouble always follows her. Shortly after, while exploring her new world, Alicia finds the symbol of the shepherd on a stone. The stone starts to move and opens up a path to the world of the Seraphs, making Alicia realize that the legend is real. Elsewhere, Sori, a human youth who resides in Elysium, the home of the Seraphim, and Miklio, a young Seraph, also arrive at the ruins. Sori decides to explore the ruins, but he is interrupted by an elder who informs him that the ruins are off-limits as it has been sealed off a long time ago. Later that day, Sori finds out that the ruin used to be the capital of Seraphin, which is a place of worship for the Seraphs. Furthermore, he discovers that the Seraphs and humans used to live together peacefully with the Celestials blessing humans. But as usual, we mess things up. Curious, Sori and Miklio decide to explore the ruins the next day and make an awesome discovery. The following morning, Sori sets out to explore the ruins, but doesn't realize that Alicia is on the other side. Just as Alicia approaches Elysium, the weather starts to change and lightning starts to strike after Sori picks up an artifact of the Shepherd. Shortly after, Master Zenray is notified of Alicia's presence in his world, and he attacks her with his lightning powers, and she is trespassing into his territory. I never want to get on his bad side. Concurrently, the lightning also attacks Sori and Miklio, and they crash into the temple of the shepherd. Not long after, they spot Alicia lying unconscious and Sori decides to help her despite Miklio's warnings as they have been warned to stay away from humans. Of course, he is not going to listen. They manage to get to her by crossing a transparent bridge built in ancient times. Sori wakes Alicia and she asks him if he is a shepherd, which surprises him. Thought she gave up on that. Make up your mind, princess. Still surprised by her question, Sori reveals that he is just a human, which saddens Alicia. Emotional damage. She asks McLeo if he is a human too, but he doesn't answer her and questions why she is here, and that's the kind of guy every girl likes. Moments after, Alicia confirms that she is in the celestial capital, but she is surprised that there is no shepherd in Elysium. However, Sori reveals that he found a mural about a shepherd wielding the sacred blade, but this makes Alicia sad, as she starts to believe the legend of the shepherd is nothing more than a myth. Really? Pick a side. Feeling sorry for Alicia, Sori decides to bring her back into the village, even though McLeo thinks it is a bad idea because she looks suspicious. Shortly after, they arrive at Alicia, and Alicia is amazed at its beauty. She believes Seraphin lives in this beautiful world, and Sori states that all heavenly beings are called Seraphs by humans. Is he calling humans? Humans dumb, Miklio decides to inform Master Zenrai about Alicia's arrival and leaves, while Sori continues to show her around. Moments after, Alicia and Sori encounter a group of seraphs. Although she is unable to see them, she asks for their help in saving the world, but they ignore her and ask her to leave. 
Later that day, after being informed of the situation, Zenrei gets angry at Sori for breaking the rule as humans always cause calamity. We are not all that bad. However, Sori defends himself, stating that seraphs and humans used to coexist a long time ago. Yeah, until we brought calamity. At night, Sori heads home with Alicia and he asks about her home. She reveals that she comes from the capital city, Highland, where the sacred blade resides. Having read the records of the Celestial, Sori is excited about the legend of the sword, but Alicia reveals that no one has been able to pull out the sword and save the world. You could say their pull-out game is weak. After Alicia goes to sleep, Sori realizes that McLeo has been spying on them. Definitely not creepy at all. And he confronts him about it. He informs Sori that the Seraphs have agreed to let Alicia stay in Alicia until she is ready to leave, which makes him happy. The next day, Sori takes Alicia hunting, but they soon notice that they are being watched. At night, Alicia has a terrible nightmare and reveals to Sori that the world is plagued with calamities. She also reveals that all her loved ones were killed right in front of her, and Sori deduces that Alicia was in search of a shepherd that can save the world from darkness, but she gave up on her quest after realizing that it was just a legend. The next day, Sori tries to cheer her up by taking her to see the mural and showing her the crest of the shepherd. He manages to convince her that the shepherd will appear when the worlds need him the most and gives her the crest, restoring hope to Alicia. Reality is often disappointing. Soon after, Alicia decides to leave Alicia in search of the shepherd as the festival is about to begin. She thanks Sori for his help in saving her and reveals that she could sense the presence of the seraphs even though she could not see them. She hands the crest back to him and asks Sori to attempt the trial of the sword, but he refuses. While she leaves, Sori thinks about her proposal, but he is interrupted by Zenrei, who reveals that a hellion has infiltrated his territory without any trace. Sori and McLeo go after the beast, who turns out to be the monster that attacked Alicia. After witnessing the hellion decimate a seraph, Sori attacks him in anger, while McLeo provides backup. They manage to defeat the beast, but he gets back up and prepares to attack. However, he is forced to retreat after Zenrei arrives, but he accidentally reveals that he is after Alicia. Realizing that Alicia is in danger, Sori decides to go after her and tries to sneak out of Alicia at night. However, he meets McLeo on his way out of the village after the latter figures out his plan. Much to Sori's surprise, McLeo decides to follow him to the outside and an excited Sori begins his search for Alicia. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If this video is the most popular of our latest collection of recaps, we will make a part two. Let us know what series you want us to recap next in the comments below.